Football's over, soccer's over, volleyball's over, field hockey's over. It's basketball season. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Rocket Sports Report. As always, I'm the editor-in-chief of the Rocket Cody Nesper. Today, I'm joined by the Rocket's assistant editor-in-chief, er, assistant sports editor, Steve Sukovich, the Rocket sports editor, Justin Krause, and from WSU FM 88.1, their sports director, Joe Nania. Guys, thanks for coming on today. We're gonna talk about the basketball team. We're gonna start with men's. Went 2-0 over the weekend in uh, some tournament play. They played a couple of good teams. Both teams, I think, made their conference playoffs last year. So first question, what's the biggest takeaway from this weekend from the stats that you've looked at? I think they might have found their point guard is my biggest thing in Bruce Spruill. I mean, he dropped 27 points on Sunday. That's, that's just awesome. Uh, whenever me and you attended the uh, exhibition game Bush's pit, uh, I asked uh, Coach Reynolds, I said, hey, have you figured out anything you want to do with the point guard position? And he flat out told me pretty much no. He did not know what he wanted to do with the position, but if you have a guy dropping 27 points and the night before he led the team in assists with eight whenever he was at the point, I think they might have found their point guard for the season. Joe, what's it after you? I, I mean, I was really impressed to, you know, go down, like you said, a tournament in West Virginia, taking on, you know, Glenville State and also another West Virginia team. Uh, it's slipping my mind right now. But West Virginia Wesleyan. Wes Wesleyan, absolutely. But uh, two impressive wins going down on the road. And, you know, they're projected better than they were last year. And one guy I'm looking to step up is Kyrie Wooten, uh, one of the returning players. And I think there's only four returning players, guys. Uh, you know, obviously a lot of newcomers, but looking forward to this season. I think they have a chance to be a decent team this year, to be honest. Yeah, I think they're going to be much improved from last year. Uh, looking back at last year, the two things that plagued them, free throw shooting and penalties. And this year, free throw shooting is not looking very good. Compared to last year, they're actually down. It's only been two games, but they're only shooting 61%. Last year, they shot 67 um, other than free throw shooting and fouls, what do you think the biggest issue for the team to be successful this year is going to be? Steve, we'll start with you this time. Uh, I'm say simply saying just making buckets. Um, the fr uh, field goal percentage is not as what it should be, but um, aside from that, um, stepping uh, field goal shooting up just simply that can uh, increase the chances, of course. Mm. I'm going to specify that, and it's the three-point field goal shooting because, uh, you know, where Coach Reynolds always says they struggle on ones and threes. I mean, you know, that, that's a lot of the game, and especially with college basketball moving more and more towards shooting more and more threes. Slipper Rock has not. I know that's not their style of play, but if you have teams who just by chance make a couple of threes in and you're consistently making twos, it's going to even out at some point, even if you're out playing them. So you got to have at least a couple of guys who can be able to make three-pointers on a somewhat reliable basis. Mm -hmm. I hate to piggyback off you guys, but I'm going the same thing you were going to say, three-point shooting. Uh, you know, you got a lot of guys this year that are 6'8", six, 6'9", six, a lot of depth in the post and guys that are able to get to the rim, and that's great, but you lose guys like Vinny Lassley, who we haven't seen, and also GV, uh, Jeremy Verado, the Brazilian, who was able to come in sometimes and make a three off the bench, also Vinny Lassley. It's important to expand on that. See if you can find some other guys make some three-point shots as well. Mm -hmm. Looking at the new guys, like you said, there's only four returner, returners. Which one of them has stood out to you the most such, thus far? Justin, you're not allowed to say Spiro. <laughs> uh, besides Spiro, it's got to be Micah Till. I mean, this guy, he dominated at some points in the second half versus Pitt. And then uh, in their first game, I believe he dropped 20. I know he had a double-double. Yeah, 20, uh, and, 20 and 13, I believe. I mean, yeah. he's playing a very powerful power forward position. That's perfect for him. He used to play tight end for the university, for uh, North Carolina State. So, you know, that's a big D1 school playing in the ACC football, and he's still built like a tight end. And that's what they need because Slipper Rock has some good big men, guys like Richard Bivens and Crystal Malalu, but they're a little bit skinnier. You know, they're pretty lean, but Micah, he's still built like a tight end, so he's able to throw that weight around and bully people sometimes down there on the post. Mm. Steve, who's caught your eye? I'm going to have to piggyback on Micah because seriously, I'm, I'm a fan of the guy who's just down there and the, getting the rebounds, making all that stuff happen down low. Mm -hmm. That's my kind of basketball just from my point of view. Mm -hmm. Joe, who you got? You're not allowed to say Micah. I'm not going <laughs> to say Micah. Either. But a uh, guy that I'm looking to see is uh, Murdoch Green this year. He's a guy who likes to take a lot of shots, took a lot of shots last year. And I'm looking to see, is he able to be consistent this year you know, one of the returning guys, one of the four returning guys, I'm looking to see, is he going to be one of the guys to step up and start making a lot of shots for this team? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with uh, Brandon Simmons. Uh, he actually was really impressive in the first game to me. He dropped 15 points and nine rebounds. He went seven of eight from the, from the penalty stripe. Obviously, we talked about their, uh, their biggest weakness there. But 
going on, the, the, the system that coach Kevin Reynolds likes to play is defense and rebounding, and he likes to go with the hot hand. He, he always mixes up the starting lineup with whoever's having the best week of practice. So with that, Justin, we've talked about this before, a lot of Division II teams just like to shoot, 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 and they'll just try to outscore you. With Reynolds' kind of slower pace of play and uh, the, the kind of like advanced metrics he goes with, um, which players, um, especially the big men, which players do you think are going to really have to come in and score those points in the paint and, and get those rebounds? Well, first, I just want to mention real quick, Brandon Simmons, another Marshall Town guy. For Slip Rock, seems like we've had 30 of them, uh, since, even just since I've been in school. But uh, two big guys down there I already mentioned, uh, Richard Bivens and Crystal Malalu. Like I said, they're lean, but they are centers. They're both six foot nine, six ten, whatever they're listed at. They're both really tall, and the thing is they've been underperforming a bit this year. I know Chris always gotten into some foul trouble. He didn't start the second game because Coach Reynolds likes to start the hot hand. But you gotta you got to get some reliable points down there in the paint. And I know that those guys, their centers, they're not going to be great from the line, but at least you got to draw some and ones to try to get some extra points from the line. So those guys are going to have to step up coming in further in the year because Mike Cotill's doing a great job power forward, but he's six five, six six. He can't contend with centers down there, way down in the purse. Mm -hmm. Joe, you got a dark horse? I'm going to say Crystal Malalu is my dark horse okay. because, you know, he really did have some great games last year, but he also had some games where, you know, he got into foul trouble, like you said, or, he, he, you know, he had some defensive errors. And he's a guy I really want to see step up. Uh, Crystal is a guy we all root for, you know, from the Netherlands. Great guy off the court. But uh, looking to see Crystal Malalu be a dark horse this year for this team. Mm -hmm. So like we said, Slip Rock won both their games this past weekend. In the first game, it was Mike Cattell and Aaron McDonald. Both had double-digit points and both almost had double-doubles. Uh, Aaron McDonald only had nine rebounds. In the second game, it was Spurrell and Micah again. Again, both double-figure scoring. Micah with, er, Spurrell with 20. We'll transition to the women's now, who had a less successful weekend. They dropped both of their games. Um, they're giving up an average of 80 points a game. Opponents are shooting 36% from three, and the rebounding margin is at minus seven. So Steve, you're gonna be covering the women's team this year. What's the biggest issue for them that you think they're gonna to need to correct? Um, I, need, I think they need to find the backbone of their team right now. They have a solid uh, starting four right now, but uh, um, Madison Johnson, a great uh, transfer from St. Francis, has really stepped up. But uh, Leanne uh, Gibson, Christina uh, Petrobapa, and uh, Morgan Henderson, they're uh, players that are getting the same amount of playing time, but they're, they need to step up because uh, he's, uh, Coach um, McGraw, he's given them opportunities to shine, and that's uh, what, where they need to find is the backbone of their team. Mm -hmm. Justin, biggest issue? I think they just need to make more shots. I mean, I know that's easy to say, but if you're going to be a team that's going to play small, then you have to shoot a higher percentage because you know you're going to get out-rebounded and you're going to get out-defensed at some points. You know, only two players on the roster that are six foot two or taller, uh, so, you know, they're going to play small. But, I mean, no, three-point shooting has been pretty lousy so far. Um, and, you know, not making as many long twos because you're going to have to make those long twos. You can't drive inside the paint with their size disadvantage that they have. So just they need to either take more quality shots or be able to find more openings to get through the defense. They are shooting 33% from the floor overall at this point. Joe, what do you got? What, what do the women's team need to do? I just think they need to play together, guys. Uh, you know, obviously, Coach McGraw has built a culture around that program that hasn't been there for a long time. So I, I just think they need to continue that. And you've got some returning players. And like he said, Krista Petropola, Morgan Henderson, returning players need to step up and uh, fill their senior leadership roles. All right, if we look at the, the women's team, there really is a pretty solid four starters. And Sierra Patterson, who's back this year. Uh, Hinder Leiter, who should have won PSAC West Freshman of the Year. Absolutely. And then you've got Heinle, who comes off the bench. Johnson, who comes off the bench. Leanne Gibson, who's a team captain as a sophomore. Pietro Polo, who comes off the bench, and Morgan Henderson, who's the starting center. Um, I think they're really going to need to find a lineup and stick with it the whole year. Um, I think definitely for women's, there's probably going to be less quality depth, and so you need those five starters. But looking at some of these bench players, uh, Heinle, Madison Johnson, uh, Gibson, and even Krista, which one of them do you think has the potential to have the biggest year? Uh, Steve, we'll start with you again. Um, I like Gibson. Um, she's uh, making good quality over time. She's got nine points so far in the season, um, collecting nine rebounds, which is high up on the team. Um, I like the way she's been performing so far this season, and uh, I just hope uh, she'll continue to get the amount of playing time that she's getting. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, for me, it's kind of tough. I'm slipping between two, but I'm going to go with Madison Johnson. Uh, does transfer in from St. Francis. Uh, dropped 18 points versus Cincinnati as a freshman at St. Francis. You don't do that by mistake. So that talent's got to be there somewhere. And so far this year, she's shown good flashes. Um, she's not going to be running the point, obviously. Um, she has in the past, and that, that's Brooks' territory. But uh, as a shooting guard, I think she's going to be able to hopefully improve on that. She hasn't made as many threes as we'd like her to see this year, but she's been playing some pretty solid defense, hasn't been getting in foul trouble, not making any metal mistakes, so that's encouraging. Just some more shots of hers are going to fall. Mm -hmm. Well, let's look at the uh, the uh, backcourt for the women's team, because I think they're pretty good. Uh, Hinderleiter, who's very good, and then pa uh, Sierra Patterson, who's back this year. Um, she didn't play last year. She's, she's an all-conference talent. If you look at these two, what do you think the potential for them, obviously Hinderleiter, uh, played shooting guard a lot last year when Lexi Carpenter was here, but when Lexi got hurt for the season, Brooke transi transitioned back to the point. Um, she's really, really good at shooting free throws, uh, kind of ironically. But with these two, what do you think the potential is? Justin, we'll start with you this time. I mean, there's, there's a lot of potential there, uh, especially for Brooke. Like you said, one of her biggest things is she is deadly from the free throw line. And so that's just a killer for any other team because you know you can't play too tough a defense on her because she's going to make those free throws. And then, you know, if she's driven down the paint, you're trying to not lay off her too much, and then she can give it to Sierra. Um, you know, those are two really good players. And I think they're both going to be all-conference selections. And I actually think Brooke is better as a point guard. She seems more comfortable, at least. Um, especially last year after the small transition phase that she had coming into it, she became a lot better as a point guard than she was as a shooting guard, I think. So I think those two create a really good dynamic, and that's going to be very hectic for other teams to have to deal with, to know that you cannot foul Brook, and you also have to pay attention to where she's passing the ball. Mm -hmm. Joe? I do think they're going to be a deadly combo, and obviously the loss of Lexi Carpenter really hurts. I mean, she was the heart and soul of that team. And looking for them two to step up, obviously Sierra Patterson is taking a lot of threes as we gandered over the stats. Uh, she was 5 of 13 uh, one of the games, so improving from 1 and 8 from the first game. I think, you know, the key is just distribute the ball. Distribute the ball and, you know, find shots on the outside. Make your shots. Mm -hmm. so you. so they're going to have more success playing together more often. I mean, uh, with Patterson, you said she was out last season. Um, they haven't had a lot of playing time on the court together. So uh, aside from practice, they're going to get, as long as they get more playing time together, they're going to continue to grow and get better. That's a good point. Um, like I said, women lost both games. They played Virginia State and Lincoln University. Uh, Virginia State was the rough one. I think they lost by 30. Uh, but Lincoln was pretty close. OK, we'll go last question here. Either team, uh, both teams open up their home schedules this weekend with doubleheaders. Either team, which player are you most excited to see this weekend? I need a second to think about that <laughs> one first. Steve, anybody, I, who's got it? I'd be uh, excited to see uh, Patterson actually uh, for the women's because uh, I, she, she didn't play last season and uh, it'll be the first, the first home games this season so we'll actually get to see some action. I'm uh, excited to see what she can bring to the mm. team. I'm going to go with uh, Murdick just because he's finally a senior here at Slippery Rock. He, play, he was one of the beat team's best players last year and a leader. And now he gets his season opener at home. I think he's going to have uh, energy flowing. You know, those guys, they like to scream and talk a lot, especially Crystal and Murdick. Uh, so I can't wait to just see that uh, dynamic between them and just see Murdick play. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to see Bivens for the first time. Uh, you guys have obviously mentioned he's a great player. And, you know, I'm just looking forward to seeing him in live, in person. Big game versus Shippensburg this week number eight in the country, so we'll see how they perform. I'm, I'm really excited to see it. I was going to say Bivens, too, because he's a true Division One talent, because yeah. he played at uh, Florida International last year, and he right. started, I think, eight games. So he's a true Division One talent coming here to Slip Rock. He's tall. Uh, he actually plays forward and not center, so that's interesting. Um, but I won't steal yours, so I'll go with uh, Brooke Hinderleiter. I think she has the potential to be maybe one of the best point guards in the conference this year. Uh, she was last year as a freshman, um, didn't get West freshman year, though, got robbed. Coach McGraw told you that. But yeah, I'm excited <laughs> to see Hinder later. She's a special talent. She was su very, very good in high school, very, very good so thus far in college. But yes, both teams open this weekend at home. Uh, the Rocket will have full coverage on all those games. You can read all of that on theonlinerocket.com. And be sure to listen to Joe's show Sunday Sepper, which is Sundays at uh, 8 o'clock. Yep. Thank and you. then are you, are, we, are you calling the, the games this weekend? We are calling the games this weekend on uh, 88.1, both of them. So. Tune in for that. Three which, which day? On Saturday. 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 I believe the time is three o'clock. Three o'clock. Tip yeah. off. All right. See you then. That's eighty-eight point one on your FM dial. 
WSU FM, uh, Voice of the Rock. Yeah. Thank uh, you, sir. So thank you so much for watching. We'll be back, not next week because it's Thanksgiving and we go home too, but the week after that we'll be back for our last two shows before finals. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have a good Thanksgiving, everybody.